Right. Uh, hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Gerald. I'm a technical evangelist with Microsoft Singapore. So I mainly deal with uh, startups. I work with Azure and uh, I help startups to get on board the uh, Azure platform, get on Bispark and if any of the technical inquiries with uh, architecture, pipelining and so on, then I will help them out with, with it. So uh, today I'll be talking about our Azure Machine Learning and Machine Learning Studio and um, how you can make simple uh, you can make models and stuff. I was just showing a very simple demo about how you can uh, do build a simple model about uh, with digit recognition on Azure Machine Learning with minimum coding. Okay. So uh, what is what is machine learning? It's a branch of computer science in which uh, a machine a computer learns from data in order to perform predictive anal analysis. So. It, it finds patterns in large volumes of data and uses these patterns to form predictive analysis. Microsoft offers Azure Machine Learning, Amazon offers Amazon Machine Learning, and Google offers the Prediction API, as well as uh, it has a tensor, it has TensorFlow support. So machine learning models fall into two broad categories, supervised and unsupervised. So in supervised learning, the, machine, the model is trained with a large volume of data and the algorithms is then used to predict an outcome from future inputs. Most supervised learning models use regression algorithms to compute an outcome from a continuous set of uh, possible outcomes or classification algorithms compute the probability of an outcome from a finite number of possible outcomes. Okay. So in this case, we'll be, I will just be showing like a very simple, very, very small training set of like 0 0.5 MB actually to predict like what DG am I drawing. So I'll show you a demo later. Okay. So uh, I'm sure you all remember, I think it's last year, there was this uh, how old, how old or net where you should like, scan your photo and you'll try and guess how old you are. So the AI sometimes gets it right, if you, like, sometimes it gets it wrong, if you smile, it be you become younger and so on, yeah. So this is the timeline for like uh, how Microsoft has been using machine learning. It all started from like fil basic filtering or junk mail, and then slowly built Go on, build on and on until today. We now have this Azure Machine Learning, which you can, which is, makes machine learning more accessible to everyone. So, Azure Machine Learning is a fully managed uh, cloud service for building and oper operationalizing machine learning models. You can, you, you, it's, you use the Machine Learning Studio, which is a browser-based tool that provides an easy way to do, to drag and drop in. Uh, different models to do to quickly build your machine learning model and then it and then you can just press run and then it will find a and then you will find a GPU instance and then just build your model out from there so it's very efficient you don't need to spin up expensive GPU instances it gives you a quick way to quickly test your models out and finally there's also one one last thing is that you can expose now after this you can expose your model very quickly as a web service either as a trained model or to train the model from there. So that one I will show later as to how to expose uh, the model as a web service. Okay. So this is a quote, quote from a graduate student who went to the University of Massachusetts. So he went to work for Microsoft afterwards, yeah. Okay. So Machine Learning Studio is a visual editor. It simplifies machine learning by providing drag and drop workflow. So gives you an assortment of modules which you can drag and drop and use. You can also insert R and Python code anywhere in the workflow if you need extra flexibility with your model. Okay, so machine learning starts with data, which can come from a variety of sources. The data is then needs to be cleaned before it can be used. Machine Learning Studio introduces modules to help with the cleaning. So if you need to like remove rows and missing data, remove duplicates or clean outliers. So you can do all this within a machine learning studio. So once, that, once the data is ready, you can select algorithm and train the model by allowing it to iterate over data and find patterns in it. After this comes, you, you, you can then score and evaluate the model, which tells you the model is able to predict the outcome. So this, you can perform everything within machine learning studio. So after this, once you're done, you're satisfied with the model, you can then select deploy as web service and deploy as web service to do further testing. So uh, these are some of the machine learning algorithms available within Machine Learning Studio uh, 
I'm not a data scientist. I don't know like all a, any of them actually. But yeah, this might be of interest to to you all if you if you have done the statistics. Yeah. So it has uh, 25 of the classic algorithms in the machine learning is divided into four categories: uh, anomaly detection, regress, regression, and yeah, you check. <laughs> okay, yeah, the four main categories. Uh. Okay, so um, uh, just move on. So this is a simple linear regression. So it's used for statistical modeling. And, uh, so yeah. So training a linear regression model with millions of values can take time. But once the model is trained, using it to perform predictive analysis is fast because running a model involves solving the equation which coefficients have already been computed. Illustration is showing that uh, picking the right algorithm is important for building an uh, effective module. Okay. Yeah. So this is the machine learning cheat sheet. Um, if you're interested, I can send, I can uh, upload the slides later as well. Uh, we have a GitHub for for this as well, so you can take a take take a download and take a look further. Okay. Yeah. So deploying as a web service. So after this, well, when, after you after you've done your model, built it, think it's okay, the scoring is alright, then you can select a button. Deploy as a web service, so you can call using the REST API to call it, and then do you can either use select train a model or to give me an answer from the from the model. Okay. Yeah. So there's a free free ebook. I think it's a little outdated. I went to check. It's like 2015. So you can still take a look. Yeah. If you all want to copy down the link, you can. Yeah. <coughs> Yep, okay, done. All right, uh, so I'm going to just cover the hands-on lab. So I'm just going to show, show you what the result is. So for this, I actually, it's actually, uh, I've actually used one of the sample codes to build an electron app. So this is a 64-point 64, 64 grid for you to do your, to, so it predicts, uh, try and predict a digit. So it's not very accurate because it used the half a Mac CSV. I can show you the CSV later. Okay. So I'll just draw like, I don't know, it, and then it says, <laughs> Yeah, so it's not very accurate because it's a really, really, really small data set. And also because the resolution is really, really bad because it's like, uh, I think it's one sixteenth of the actual resolution used to train the model, yeah, used to generate the, the, the raw data. So sometimes it gets it right, I guess. <laughs> I guess the demo gods are just not, ah, okay, fine, so seven words. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'll just show you like how 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 you can build something like this to connect a client to your machine learning model. A really simple one. Okay, um, switch over. Okay. So uh, this is uh, uh, Azure portal itself, and then afterwards uh, you can we can just start creating like a new machine learning workspace. So we have a free tier for the machine learning workspace. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact details is. I need to go and check, but there's a, I think there's a free tier, and the cost-wise is a lot less uh, versus you spinning out a GPU instance, installing Spark, etc., etc., onto 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 the onto the virtual machine. Okay. Yep. So you can start off by creating a new machine learning workspace. So I'm gonna make one now. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, so uh, there is a price, you also need to select a pricing tier for your web service. You can just pick the, I think there's a, I think there's a free tier. Okay, so I've already picked the free tier before, so I'm not allowed to use the free tier again. So, but you, for your first time, you can pick the free tier. So it's $3 a day, but you can just turn it off when you're not using it, so yeah.
And yes, if you all have a if you all have a company that's uh, that has registered uh, less than five years, uh, making less than a million a million dollars USD in revenue, you can sign up for Bispark. Bispark provides you with five accounts with one hundred fifty dollars in credits uh, for each of the accounts every month. This is for one year. So the credits cover everything on the Azure platform, including machine learning studio. And if you want, you can try cognitive services as well. Yeah, the Bispark program. B I Z S P A R K. So it's here. Yeah. Yes. So this is for startups who are interested to get onto the Azure platform and just try out a bit of our services. So it covers thing everything on the Azure platform. Okay. So I'll just assume that everything got created. So once it's, once it's all done, you can go to Machine Learning Studio, and then you can pick up your, and then you can create your new project and your stuff. So I've uploaded the last set already. Come on, don't forget it. Okay, never mind. Yo, okay, so another, another thing that might be interesting is that uh, this is Machine Learning Studio is also integrated with uh, Azure Notebooks. So this gives you a, a Jupyter Notebook instance. This is currently a free service. So you can go to, I think, notebooks.azure.com and uh, play, create, create Jupyter Notebooks to share and, and play around with. So this is currently a free service. I'm just gonna download it and then show you like what what does it look like. Yep. So there's uh, 64, 64 points on the on the grid just now, as you saw just now. So this is the this is what the data set looks like. So. It, I will try and predict like what digit is there based on the based on what is currently shown on the on the grid. Okay, so so we go to experiments and then you create a new experiment. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Sure. Hold on. Let me go find it. Yeah. So what does the number mean? Zero means is empty. Numbers means what? Intensity. Yeah, I I think it's intensity because uh, this is like this was actually. Uh, pulled from a from a more higher resolution data set. So this is this was like I think it's the percentage fill of the of the square itself. So that's why the, 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 the model is not very, very accurate at the moment. So this then the P0102 is the is the position on the grid itself. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so how do you how do you start this? So you create a new machine learning project, then you go to your save data sets. After you upload a data set, then you can just drag and drop. Then you uh, then you start from the data set. Okay. Hold on. Hmm? I need to I need to try and remember what I did. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> By the way, this entire thing is available here on, on our on our GitHub. It's uh, the machine learning workshop. We'll cover like how do you do how do you use Azure Machine Learning to build a simple model. It comes with resources like how do you how to use how to build a simple Electron app to connect to the, to the client. You can build it, you can also build any other client also as well. So it's available under MSFT Imagine slash computer science under workshops. We also have te technical talks and all a whole bunch of other good stuff here as well. 
So this is a very this is, can you serve as a very useful resource if you are interested to get onto Azure and try out some of our other services. I can show you like some of the examples and other stuff as well. Yeah. So this is some of the things that are covered under the Microsoft Imagine on, on our GitHub. You can just go in, click, see see the see a presentation and stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna go back and cover how am I gonna create this? <laughs> Okay, so when you upload this, you can just right click and do visualize, which will show you basically what I opened up in Excel. Like, what was the, yeah. Okay. So the variables is uh, each row represents a digit from uh, zero to nine. Uh, let me just go and right click and visualize. So each row rep uh, represents a digit from zero to nine. So as you can see here, the final the final column. So this data set is three thousand eight hundred and twenty six rows and sixty five columns. The first sixty four columns contain value from zero to sixteen, representing four by four groups of blocks of pixels. So each digit in the data set was scanned into a thirty two by thirty two array, and it gives a total of uh, one zero two four pixels per digit. So this each scan is represented by 64 values, each representing 16 pixels. So yeah, resolution is terrible. <laughs> okay, so what we are trying to train for is the final value here, this uh, the digit here. So now we're gonna try and figure out how to tra how train a model. So let's go to edit metadata. Okay, so we're gonna change the data type a little bit. Hmm. Launch column selector. So we wanna grab the digit out. And then we'll make it make it categorial. And then we just save. So another thing is, remember to save regularly. If it, it doesn't save automatically and you don't want to be working on a lot of stuff and then you forget to save and you close your browser by mistake and you've got to start over again. It's really, really bad. I've really, I already had that twice happen when I was testing the demo out. So yeah, that's not good. Okay, so we're gonna split the data now because we already split. We, we, so the data contains like the train stuff and the, and the stuff we want to train for. So we're gonna split the data set now. Okay. So we're gonna split it into, um, we're gonna split it into 80, 80, 80, 20. So 80% uh, 80 of the data we're gonna use 80% of the data we're going to use for training. 20% will be used to score the to score the data set. So we do a random. Make sure you select randomized split because the data is if you especially if you're doing like data that's generated in order. Let's see if and then I'm going to. Train model. Where's my train model? Okay, train model. So we're gonna train the model now. Okay, so it's complaining. So we're gonna launch a column selector, to select a column. And then we want the digit. Okay, that's it. And then we're gonna use a multi class. Logic stick regression, which I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay. Select, drag, drop, generate. So we're gonna save it. We're gonna run. Yep, so it, it ran the model already. So now we need to score the model to, to see whether it's it's even working or not. So we're gonna go to score. Score model. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna run it again. Save, run. Okay, so it's uh, scored already, and then we can see. Where oh. Okay, so you select the output, click visualize. So now you're going to visualize the scoring. Oh, weird. Uh, Okay, yeah, so so this is the probabilities for the data set. So some of it has like higher probabilities than others, so this is the this is the probability. As you can see the 0 0.97, 0 0.98, and yeah, a few more. Okay. So you can see that there's some level of accuracy that it comes with some prediction. Uh, so yeah. So now we scored it, we're going to evaluate it now. Mm. Save. No, 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 save. Run. So we're gonna evaluate the model and see exactly how accurate was our scoring. Okay, as you can see, the overall accuracy is 0 0.97. It is clearly not 0 0.97 as I will demo later again. <laughs> but yeah, so you can use this to quickly like evaluate your scoring and see how, how well does it actually score based on what, you, what you're checking. Mm. Okay, so now that we have built a model that is supposedly 97% accuracy, you gotta go test it on some real world stuff, right? Yeah, so very quickly, you can just select set up web service. So uh, with what this has hap what this is happening is that you can use this as a predictive experiment. You can use your web service data to continue to train your model and generate more data, or you can just use it just generate results from it. So it depends on what you want to do with your web service. Okay, bring it save and you run. So yeah, so as you can see, there are two tabs. There's a training experiment and there's a predictive experiment. So now we've converted the training experiment to a predictive experiment to try and predict stuff with it. So deploy. Yep, so deployment page. So uh, you can, so this is your API key. I'm gonna nuke this afterwards, so don't copy it. <laughs> okay, so you can do, you can test your request response, you can test best ex execution as well, and then, uh, yeah, yep. Yep. So this is your post, this is the URL they want to post to, and you use your API key and post it there, and then you get, you can get results. So I'm gonna just show you the code. So the codes is basically a very simple Electron app. It is also available on the GitHub. It uh, takes a little bit of getting to work, so yeah, yeah. So it's very simple. You just go in, scroll down, fill in your URL and your API key. Yeah, you all can see, right? Okay, so it's very simple. Just fill in your URL, API key, and just press run. Once that's done, we will have a uh, we will have a small grid system. Hello, yes. So yeah, so you see the sixty four grid, and then you generate, and you just draw stuff, submit. Yeah, it's clearly not it's clearly not ninety seven percent. Okay. 
or draw, I don't know. It's, that's definitely a four. <laughs> okay, some numbers are definitely a lot easier than to predict, for it to predict than others. Yeah. So what number you all want? One. One? <laughs> You'd be surprised how badly that scores. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to draw a more nicer one. What, what do you think it is? Four. It's a four. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so yeah, it's clearly a very, very new, very needs a lot of tuning model, but hey, it was really, really fast, right? You just drag, drop, drag, drop, click, run, and then you, came, you can come up with a web service very, very quickly. The, this is the data set of scale. The data set's resolution is scaled down. So yeah, we're going to get the actual brief of what actually happened. Hmm? Why did you use the, the original one? I think, it's, I think it's because it takes a lot longer to, to train. Uh. I'm not sure. Uh, let me just see. Also, the data set was only like half a meg. So it's not very, very big at all. Yeah. So the grid display uses 1 16th the, res the scans that the model was trained with. Yeah, so that's also why the, the, the accuracy is a lot, lot worse. So yeah, so with this, I've just shown you like how do you create a machine learning experiment, how do you load a data set, train, train your data set with the, with the mod model and deploy it as model and then call it with, the re with a REST API. Okay. All right, I am done. Uh, do you have any questions? The data set which you're using, you connect directly to SQL Server also, right? Yeah, I, I, you, can just, uh, you can just go to the machine learning studio and uh, let me go back and find it. I believe you can connect with SQL Server and uh, other services as well. Hmm. Let me go and find. Hold on, let me go and check. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> screen too big. Oh yeah, it's a uh, local files. I think you can. Uh, I think you should be able to edit uh, to f to get data from elsewhere as well. Uh, another another point to note is that these experiments can also be connected onto stream analytics instead of using SQL to do your uh, pipe your, your stream stream analysis. You can use a machine learning model to segment out your data from there as well. So it's a quick way, if you can just connect, you can connect your stream analytics pipe to it, it's a quick way to, to filter out your data and see if, you, is it what you really want or not. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Does this SQL Server install to be on hmm? the cloud, or if it is on in the office of the cloud, uh, in the office, can it just access that data from? I think you export it, export it out first before. Or it's Every time you export it? Hmm? Every time you export from a local machine to yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna uh, update your up, keep updating your data set, it's true. On-prem deployment for this, I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, there's a very new article that says you can actually use Azure Machine Learning with your on-prem SQL Server as well. That's something new, I guess. <laughs> Where's the... Oh, yeah, it's here. So, hold on. Uh. Okay. Yeah, so... It's not there, it's actually the other side. So yeah, you can use that to import your data, as you can see there. Import your data from like your Hive queries, your SQL database. I think there's on-premise as well as like new feature and document DB, which is now Cosmos DB. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. When you operationalize it, how do you do it without the database? Huh? When you operationalize the inference, how do you do it without the interface? Without the operationalize it, without the interface. 
you use the as in you want to export the whole the whole thing uh, as a. I, I use a feed piece of data set and then the results will come out like without the browser. Without the browser, this this one is purely browser based. Yeah. Yes, this is a uh, as in a REST API for this itself. I don't think so. Yeah. Can you uh, customize the machine learning models? Like do some uh, regularization or change your uh, customize the models. Is it possible? Is it possible to add your own code? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, you can add your own Python and R code into the into the model itself. How can we do this? So, given that this experiment uh, did not quite work, if we were really doing this. What options are there within the Azure ML framework to try to improve it? Can we run it with more iterations or? Yeah, probably, I think the thing was that the data set was relatively small as well as the resolution was pretty bad. So it was already, sure. yeah. Sure. So if we, when we, if we up the accuracy of everything, it should run better. Okay, no, so, so that's that's always yeah. a good thing to do to have million lines or, or to build something that's 1024. Yeah. Of, but let's, even in that, even in that case, if it was 97% for real and we want to try to get to 99, are, are there other options within here for like, like I said, more, more iterations or different model or tuning parameters or, or is this just the sort of, that's Azure, that's, that's it? Uh, this is, this is, this is, this is as much as I do know about this. Okay, so next month, my senior te technical evangelist will cover a deep dive into this, the further, the, the further on. This is more like an introductory session to basic, basic way of how, how, to, how to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. so if you're interested, you can go for party and questions next month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wuzhou. Wuzhou has done, uh, done this a lot, a lot more, a lot more country, so it's better. Okay, uh, anything else? Uh, you see, like, what other things like, 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 so yeah, you just I mean, just show like everything. So you just hide this and hide the assets. Is there any online material videos for people to go in and get them in there with all the different how how to use it? Like for purely for machine the next video. Ah yeah, for this thing like supervised learning, some sample. <laughs> I think the one you can find, there, there, there's some material online, but I don't have a specific example for that moment. Is there on YouTube? YouTube, YouTube or GitHub? Yeah, you have. Okay, so that's it. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.